I would like to welcome all of you on a presentation related to the interesting topic, I'm going to call controversial topic, modularity. My name is Jaroslav Mraček and uh, I'm from Red Hat and uh, software management team. Well, oh, what I will talk about, well, there will be some introduction, then uh, there will be something related to the how to move modular rules to the RPM, and then it will be follows how to hack modules, and let's talk about how to list alternative software, and what about stream defaults, and at the end, well, there will be the section related to the testing of alternative streams. Well, before we start to talk about modularity and how to move uh, rules about modularity, let's talk about a feature of the modularity, because this is sometimes overlooked. Therefore, what is modularity and what it provides? Well, modularity provides virtual repositories with dependencies, and it means these repositories has uh, requires and the conflicts. Also, uh, it allows you to set a different um, alternative uh, for the alternatives different life cycle. For the sum distribution, it, this is a, one of the key features. Therefore, how to deliver software to the users with the explicit stating and visible stating, okay, it has a limited life cycle in comparison to the main part of the distribution. Well, another feature is that it allows you to create alternative uh, alternative um, content without modifying a spec because it will not change the uh, name of the RPMs. Modularity, it's not required because modularity creates a conflict for you and hides everything what can conflict with uh, your packages. Well, another feature is uh, better user experience with the alternatives. You can easily manage your content because you can list alternatives. You can pick what you want to install, which profiles, and so on. And, well, you can also build dependent modules. Therefore, you can build on top of uh, existing modules other content. And the last but not least, well, default software streams. This is quite important because not all features is uh, available for all of your alternatives, but I will talk about this later. Well, it's just a scheme, just a small example. Sorry for maintenance spiral. I just use it as a as an example name. Well, uh, well, Para is distributed in uh, Fedora and in Rel with alternative versions. Therefore, for the one Para, yeah, you have uh, several alternative streams, and one of the stream is marked as a default. Therefore, if you install your system, by default, you will start to consume if you need this, this stream. And also, on top of that, you can build uh, dependent modules. In this example, is a parallel DBI that could uh, be built in, uh, for all of the version of the parallels. Modularity, what it does, if you want to install parallel DBI, by default, it will automatically pick uh, in the background the default stream. If uh, you want to use the alternative, uh, alt or if you already have enabled alternative version, it means, for example, Pero 5.32, then uh, it will automatically pick the right content for your, uh, for your system. Therefore, it's quite easy to use from the user perspective. Well, you know, everything has a price. Let's talk about the price. We said that you don't need to modify specs, therefore, even all alternative perils still build package called peril. Therefore, to keep upgrade path, you need to do something with your content. Therefore, first of all, none of the modular rules are written in RPM. Therefore, you need the external the metadata that will say, okay, this is, this is part of the, this stream, this is part of another stream, and so on. Therefore, there is a modular YAML. Okay, but also, as I said, yeah, it needs to hide things that are not related to your system. Therefore, it example of the peril, uh, if you enable or if you, or if you have a default, you will only see one stream. The other streams and other content from the other stream is hidden for user. 
Therefore, it requires modular filtering, and this is implemented in DNF. Also, well, there are some protection layers. Therefore, we know that uh, or, uh, there are some safety measurements that if you install modular RPM, then, and you don't have a, a description for this modular RPM in the modular YAML, then DNF, uh, DNF will refuse to install it. They will say, okay, well, sorry, I cannot do it because I don't know nothing about this uh, RPM. To resolve all of these relationships, okay, it requires also additional solver, to which will say, okay, this content is uh, valid for your system, and I will only provide and show you the valid content for your system. And of course, well, there is a modular build system, therefore the system where you can uh, uh, build these modular alternatives. Well, let's just go with the alternative scenarios. Well, the first I would like to say a few things about how to move modular rules to the RPM. And then, well, let's talk about uh, uh, alternative stream with our modules and uh, how we can, for example, use the groups to deliver alternative modules. Well, one of the features that I mentioned at the beginning is that, uh, well, you can have a one spec to build multiple modules. Therefore, I, I will try to use an example where you will have a one module spec that will be able to be used for this alternative approach without modifying for the multiple streams. But this is just optional. Yeah, you don't need to use that. You know, many things are optional, that's the problem. Well, in the original uh, spec, well, you only define a uh, name of the package. Again, Perl, sorry. And uh, well, with the alternatives, to ensure that there will be right upgrade path, you should rename package for each stream because you want to ensure that there will be right upgrade path. Therefore, if, for example, in this example, you use that you will use a parallel and with some suff suffix, then it's unique name, and if you install this name, it will always keep the uh, right upgrade path for your system, and it will not jump from one alternative stream to another one. Additional thing, yeah, this is just a pre-requirement, but as you, say, as, as you can see, well, we start to modify spec. It's not enough. Because if you have a two names, two different names, and doesn't matter whether it, it, inside it uses the string parallel or not, by definition, they are normally installed uh, in parallel. Therefore, if they are not installed, these alternatives in parallel, you have to set up conflicts. Therefore, you have to conflict with uh, parallel because, uh, well, if you will provide parallel, then it will work. Therefore, it will ensure that only one provider of, of the parallel will be on your system. If you will not do that, you will again you will uh, get again conflict. But after when the transaction will start to perform, therefore, after you download everything, and then RPM will tell you, you know, there is a file conflict. You cannot do that. It's too late, and people don't like it, and don't do that, please. Well, if you want to achieve that your users will type DNF install parallel, and you want to install any peer parallel, including uh, uh, with this suffix. Therefore, these packages must provide parallel, and this is also a prerequisition for the conflict. And if it's an uh, ARC-specific package, you have to also provide the uh, parallel with the ISA, um, ISA macro. Otherwise, you will break other things. Well, all of these things are optional. You have to think, if you are there, you will get a feature. If it's not there, the feature is not there. It's not a requirement. Everything is optional. But some of these are required if you co have a conflict uh, with the files. Well, well, because we move from, we would like to move uh, also identifiers of the, of the, of the module, then we can set up some virtual provides. Well, I used some examples, but well, this is just an example of uh, how you can write uh, uh, information using uh, 
uh, virtual provides. But please be careful or try to use it as less as possible because, you know, anyone, any new, any new virtual provides increase the metadata, any new provides uh, increase the, uh, the requirements for the solver and, uh, you know, our distribution is still growing in this direction. Your provides is also uh, growing because no one is stripping these uh, former provides and so on. And uh, well, it will require more resources, disk, RAM, and so on. Therefore, well, please be careful as a package manager. Please look what you have in your spec and, uh, and periodically clean it, but it's not needed. It's good approach how to sustain or how to re uh, maintain our distribution in the right shape. Well, I also mentioned the Perl DBI as a dependent module. Therefore, if I have a package that depends on top of alternative, then I have to specify the build requires. If uh, in this example, I use a build requires this package conf, uh, uh, package uh, conf macro. Well, with this stuff, uh, all of your packages will provide package conf uh, parallel. Therefore, you have to modify it because uh, otherwise you will be unable to pick the right pair of provider. Therefore, if you want to build your package uh, with a certain alternative stream, then you have to modify build required, and you can use uh, these that you specify the full name uh, for the devil package. Well, be careful, this is not according to the guidelines. If you will read the guidelines, they prefer to use the package conf, but uh, uh, if you provide the alternatives, you have uh, two options. All of them will provide the same, uh, same macro or satisfy the same macro, or you will rename it inside your, your code. It means it's the name of the one file. And uh, again, this is extra work. And this is up to you. This is a definition, uh, or th this is option. Well, if we have a, such a package, if you have these alternatives, well, we can start to think about what we need from the modules. And as I said, yeah, there is a modular filtering. If you rename your packages for each stream and you set up correctly uh, conflicts, you don't need that feature because upgrade path is ensured from this point by rules inside the RPM. Therefore, you don't need a, a, a modular filtering, but you can use it. Now, from this point, it's optional. Why? Because, well, sometimes you don't want to confuse your, your users by providing thousands and thousands of packages. Therefore, sometimes it's much better to say, okay, well, here's one alternative, and you see all of the packages, and here is the list of alternatives, and you can switch. It's optional. It's up to the end user whether you want to use it or not. And if you want to uh, disable modular filtering and still use uh, modular YAML, then you can specify name of the packages in the section of the uh, demodulars and RPM, and then you will list all of the names of the packages, and then you will see them. Yeah, <coughs> DNF start to ignore them. Therefore, nothing will hide from other repositories and from non-modular stuff. But it's usually not needed if you use uh, uh, these compact packages. Well, also, you don't need a fail safe because you set up all of the rules into RPM, it's intact, therefore you don't need any, any guarder, additional guarder. How to disable a uh, modular first system for the things that are described in the modular YAML? Easy, don't build them with the modular label. If the modular label is not present in the RPM header, then again, the rule is not applied. Well, another topic is uh, default stream. And maybe, well, before, because we are, well, closely to the middle, well, let's, let's try something different. Let's try a small exercise, if you, if you don't mind. Well, let's play a, a game related to the solver. Yeah, therefore, solver is, a, um, is an algorithm that tries to pick the right version. Therefore, you set rules, and according to the rule, uh, you will get the solution. 
And let's just say, okay, well, I will, I will ask you a question and please, according to my uh, prerequisition, please answer. Yeah, therefore I'm trying to pick a random person. Well, may I ask you for cooperation? Yeah, please, well, pick anyone in this room who is in front of you. Yeah, me. Okay, well, can we repeat it once again? Frank. Yeah, if we will repeat it one other times, will, will I get a consistent, consistent uh, answer? Yes. Great. Okay, let's let's write. I know. Okay, one with you. Same question, same rule. Well, will, will I get a, a pick anyone in the room who is in front of you? In front of me. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, then, uh, and we, we will test it thousand times. We will guess the consequence. Yes. Yes, I test it independently in the two examples. Yeah, and it works. That's how we test out uh, our, let's say, uh, our theory. Yeah, we have, we set the rules and it works. Well, you know, time is passing. We have a more alternative content. And then I will ask someone from the last line. Okay, oh, they are sleeping. Ah, uh, Neil, <laughs> please, please pick anyone in the room who is in front of you. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, try again. There. Yeah, okay, and once again. Okay, that's a regression on the, on the solver, yeah? Yeah, because at the beginning we test that we have consistent results and we, we test it well, 100 times and multiple uh, into two different uh, environments and it works, yeah? And that's how it works. Therefore, at the beginning of the, of the distribution, you set your environment. You think about that you have a right approach how to deliver a software and you test it. You, add, uh, you, you set up multiple environments and it works. Suddenly after a few years, when more and more version of the software appears, then you get inconsistent reasons. And what happened? Because I tested well, solver is wrong, yeah? It's, it's regression because I tested and it worked correctly, yeah? And that's what we have normal reports for uh, our side. Therefore, if you want to set up the distribution, please think about the future. Therefore, if something works right now, even if I test it well, then it doesn't mean that it will work in future because environment change. Our distributions are live organisms. Therefore, they evolve. They are moving from the one state to another state, but you are unable to change the rules. Rules are usually fixed, baked, unchangeable, and you have to leave it at. Therefore, thank you very much for cooperation, and let's continue. Well, and we have here our default streams, and it's quite related to the, to, uh, to the uh, uh, well, uh, exercise that we have, yeah? Therefore, well, if you, if you start uh, thinking about default streams, why I need that? I have one pedal, everything works fine, yeah? But, uh, well, in future, you can get a problem because your infrastructure, your customers start to pick alternatives because they have a better version, for example. They are the better place in the repository. They have other advantages. They have a small, uh, let's say, uh, install, uh, uh, install size and so on. Therefore, there are reasons why you can get a problem. How defaults were mentioned or handled in modules? You have a special uh, document in the module YAML that defines, okay, this stream is a default, and if a user doesn't specify by another way, it is the only uh, visible content. Well, if we use uh, our RPMs with the alternatives, I set up uh, three examples what uh, people might uh, or wants to have, yeah, therefore, if I run, you know, DNF install parallel, I expect that I will get a parallel package, default package, because I would like to use a default. Why default? Because default is uh, the most supported the length of the uh, lifetime is usually longer. Most of the software, or maybe the best, all of the software use that stream. Therefore, I will not get a trouble uh, with uh, imports or with uh, additional feature and so on. Therefore, if, uh, yeah, if I want to install Perl and, well, and I use the compact packages, then any of these provider of the Perl can be installed. Therefore, let's, let's think what we can do. Well, 
if one of the stream is built without a suffix or without a original name, then DNF will pick a parallel because first it starts to start to search for the uh, for the names. Therefore, if something is named parallel, then you will get the install parallel and nothing else. Well, what happens if uh, if you have a package that require parallel, yeah? And or you want to install alternative version of the parallel video package, then you can specify in the uh, requires. It requires uh, build, pre uh, build uh, or it requires the alternative uh, parallel or it requires uh, original parallel. The last thing that I, if I have a package that requires any parallel, you know, my package does the most important part around the world. It asks for the version for the install parallel. Yeah? And then you want to get any one. Then it's a problem because uh, your package requires only parallel and all of these alternatives provide the parallel. And for the solver, I can pick any of these. Therefore, I can use the parallel that provides the highest number, but it's, not, it's usually not the default, or it is default at the beginning, but not later. Um, or, well, that's, there is no restriction for the solver. Any solution is valid. And it's, of course, it's difficult. You can use, uh, you can use a hint. That you can hint that, okay, well, I suggest that you will install default version of the parallel. Therefore, I will set something. It's, it's a weak rule. It's a hint. Therefore, uh, it only helps the solver. But it's a weak rule. What about weak rules? You can break them. Or if multiple weak rules, uh, rules appears, it happens, you know? you know? No one is restricted to not use suggest parallel for not the default, yeah? Anyone can do that. Therefore, it's weak duke in comparison to the, to the, to the uh, modular system where rules are much more stronger. Well, another topic. I am a user. I am a I'm developer, yeah? I would like to see how many alternatives I have for repair. Okay, with the modules, it was quite easy. Just write DNF module list a parallel, or I would like to list all the alternatives. That's even even more easy. No need any argument, and I will find what 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 what, what I have an interest. It's easy. Well, if my rules are strictly written only in RPMs, then well, I have to play with the with the DNF repo query, for example, and I, I have to try a uh, few commands. First, okay, the logical way, if I know how it is constructed, there is a parallel with the suffix. Then I say, okay, parallel and white card, well, you will see thousands of packages, don't, it's, it doesn't work. Too many packages. Well, then more clever way, if I know that all of alternatives provide a parallel, then I can use what provides, but it will give you all of the versions with the rel. It will be quite painful because, you know, each of the version of the parallel has a tons of the versions. Therefore, well, if I will also use a query format and I will ask for the, for the name, then it will help because I will only uh, get the unique names for the unique providers of, uh, of the package, of uh, packages that provides a parallel. Well, with the Python, that's even more funny part. Yeah, again, well, if I do, uh, if I run repo query with the Python 3 white card, well, you will get a 5,000 packages plus, yeah? Or, oh, yeah, even more. Um, well, uh, then again, well, let's think about what it provides, yeah? Only one package provides Python 3. Therefore, it's, it's not exactly, therefore, you can use a what provides, and then you can write a uh, uh, dot, and then you specify a version. If you, will, uh, uh, if you will not specify the alternative provides, you will again get uh, quite a lot of mass. And, uh, or you can, use, uh, uh, you can start to think about using just searching for the names. And again, you have to use a specific pa a pattern. Well, what is output? Or what do you think 
I would like, I would like, uh, there is an uh, outcome from these two examples. Any idea? I need to use the reverse engineering skills. First of all, I have to look inside of, of for the packages. I have to find what it provides. And each of these needs uh, another approach, how to get a list of the alternatives. And that's the problem, yeah? You cannot use a unique approach. Uh, you cannot use, uh, anyway, it's quite expensive anyway, these searches. <laughs> you have to find what you have. Thank you. You have to find uh, what you have. You have to uh, look what it provides, and then, according to your finding, uh, set uh, some rules. It means this is not what you want to expect at, uh, at this time when users wants to get a user experience. Yeah, you don't want to go do such a searching and your research just to know how many versions of that software are, or how many major streams I have in my uh, distribution. Yeah, that's something that is, you know, it's from the last century. Well, um, I also mentioned that uh, we can uh, use comms group to deliver uh, at a definition of the alternative content. It's quite similar to the, to the module YAML. It's, uh, well, uh, there are some not nice features of the groups, like updating of the, of the definition, and, uh, well, it's, it doesn't support uh, default. Therefore, if you want to use, for example, a mark default, then you have to name it. And if, if you compare how it can look like for the Perl and Perl DBI combination uh, in comparison to the, to the modules, you, will, you, you can get uh, such, a, such a combination. It will help you to pick the right packages. You don't need to care about the suffix or the renaming because you can use any pattern. And it's somehow you human readable, but anyway, you have to read it and pick the, the right content. You see more alternatives for the, for the groups because there is no logic that will pick the right content for you, like with the modules. And again, well, the combination with the defaults, it's getting more and more ugly uh, more uh, for the depend stream than for the original providers. OK, let's just look for the testing. Well, if I have a uh, if I have uh, one application and it requires two different packages, well, the testing is quite clear. It's one setup, I run all the tests, and I have a result it works, or it doesn't. Who knows? If I will provide alternative provider, even if it's not default, what is the expectation from our users? That it will, it will work. You know, you provide that. You can install that together and so on. Therefore, if you want to test it correctly, then you need to do it double tests. Therefore, with one alternative and the second alternative. Well, that's not the end. You can have also alternative for the provider B. Well. <laughs> There are already four combinations, and we are just starting, you know? <laughs> That's the problem of alternatives. Therefore, there are so many combinations. If you provide any alternative software, our users expect that it works, and it's tested, and we've marked it, you know, our distribution is tested. But you know, not this combination. Or this one, but you don't know. Yeah? Therefore, this is expected. You already have a four combinations. You have only two streams from the two providers. And well, you can look how many alternatives you can have in URL or in, in Fedora or look, look to the past, yeah, where you have a multiple alternatives. You have to also think that people built on top of that. And they can use, uh, they can pre-select certain set of the combination or they can have, uh, uh, they allow all of the combinations. Therefore, the matrix for the testing is increasing dramatically each time when you, when you increase the, uh, when, when you arise, uh, when, we, when we provide new alternative. 
And as I said, well, right now, there are completely different uh, expectations from our users. Our users expect that everything will work. It, they expect that it is tested, it's easy to use, and that, we, that our distribution is not a set of the packages, but it makes together sense. Therefore, there are different expectations than in the past, and we have to count. Uh, we don't uh, have to count on that. On that, that uh, you know, that they will be tolerant. That, and you cannot tell them, you know, you install alternative. That's your fault. Yeah, use a different. What's the default? Yeah, difficult to say. Well, and let's let's come to the to the to the end. Right? Let's talk about the summary of this. Therefore. The first part of the summary is just focused on you as a developer who wants to provide alternative features, alternative content. The short summary would be don't do that. <laughs> no, but you usually need or you want. That's the small difference. If you need, that's fine, but you have to calculate the price. You will, doesn't matter whether you will use modules, whether you will use, uh, uh, well, compact packages, whether you will use a vendor label like in SUSE, everything has its own price. Yeah? You will receive new problems, new combinations, unexpected combinations, because you know users are pretty, pretty, you know, uh, productive in using your products in the way that no one expects that uh, you will, they, uh, they will be used, but it's valid, you know. We provide tooling, therefore, and they use it as a tool. Well, therefore, not only think about maintenance calls, testing. Please test all your combinations. I know it's impossible, but think about that. It, it is expected from our users that we provide tested solutions, not a random one. Yeah. Think about that all alternatives will provide the problems yeah, with the pack package builds. As I said, important are defaults. If you pick the wrong default, uh, then you know, your, your user experience with your packages will conflict with the, with the rest of the distribution. And think about user experience. Therefore, if you would all want to use uh, modules, please try to somehow make it easy your user, users to find your alternatives, to find the documentation, and the best way, think how to do it on the distribution level. There are right now, I don't know, 30, 40 groups that might want to provide alternative software. If, if, of them, if, if each of them will invade the solution, how to list all of the alternatives, then user, each user needs to know all these 30 combinations, how to get the list. You know, you can even create, uh, create your own app. They say, okay, list all of, the, all of the, my alternatives. It works, yeah? And everyone says, it works. And you say, so, you know, you are crazy, yeah? Because I have to, how I found your solution to listing all alternatives. The problem is there are tons of way how you can deploy alternatives. Therefore, you cannot find uh, similar patterns between each teams. Therefore, well, please open the discussion on the distribution level, how to make life of our users much easier. Well, if you have modules without modules, it doesn't mean that you cannot s sell them as a module. You can still ship non-modular packages with the modular YAML. Therefore, and you can disable, as I already mentioned, features. Therefore, modularity is not only about the build system, it's a complex stuff that can be interfered with, with the multiple things, with, with multiple sides. And additional things, if you think that the best way is to introduce a new type of the metadata, well, be, be careful. Because any new metadata causes a lot of problems in infrastructure, in satellite, and 
many distributions will drop them because they don't know that and they will not sync your content. And if you will decide to go this way or your distribution, then please unify it and don't expect that in five years you will again want to introduce another way how to list your alternatives. Well, thank you very much for the listening and let's open a discussion. Do you have any questions? Go on. <laughs> Me? No. Okay, the question is, uh, can we just kill it? And, well, um, and then uh, additional note modules. Maybe let's not answer this question, let's ask another one. Doesn't matter, it can sleep. Well, don't ask that question. Ask, do we need alternatives? That's the question number one. Do we need alternatives? Well, Okay, the answer from the Neil uh, uh, is that, uh, well, no, because any way how you will do uh, alternatives, it will make you crazy. And that's maybe what even I said, yeah? Therefore, in definition, alternatives make problems. Doesn't matter how you will land them, you will only experience different types of the problems. Therefore, it's a trade. I don't want this problem. No problem, you will have this one. Is this what you want to? <laughs> And okay, well. Or you can have both problems. Yes. <laughs> but you, yeah. And mostly you don't see them both at the one time. You experience one by another one, especially during the life cycle and so on. Therefore, yeah. That's right. Okay. Another question. Go on. What's the current state of the application? Deprecation of modules? <laughs> you want you want to see them in the rail. Okay. Um, well, uh, with the answer is that uh, you know, uh, there are some attempt how to get rid of the modules, and uh, we have to talk about whether we want al alternatives. This is the, for my side, the most important questions. The, the, well, you can ask what is worse. Yeah, to have a modules, or you, you have uh, alternatives without the definition. Therefore, you will not see any list of the alternatives. You will be maybe, you know, you will sleep calm and so on, but sooner or later you will get all of the problems. Or, you know, you will get different set of the problems. That's, that's the funny part. You can't. Okay, uh, well, the question is uh, whether uh, or we can get uh, a read of modules from RHEL 8 and 9. The answer is no, you can't, because uh, for one good reason. What is expected uh, from our users of the RHEL? That will not change yet. Okay, I am out of the time, but please don't hesitate to ask me any questions or open uh, any discussion. Uh, after the talk. Thank you very much for listening and thank you for the questions. <laughs>